Greetings, everybody. I am Lobo, and welcome to episode 87 of my Minecraft survival series. We are back here in Luna in the farm district once again, and this place is coming together. I'm really liking the way the buildings are looking around here. And once we actually get some landscaping in here, it's going to look awesome. But let me go ahead and talk about some stuff that we were working on between episodes. So last episode, we ended off trying to get more farmers into Luna, right? Uh, so I AFK'd here for a couple hours, and I'll show you what we got so far. We got two brown coat villagers here. We have a fisherman right here, and we have a Fletcher right here. Um, and we also got this guy who kind of got out as I was laying these guys out of the room. Uh, but the Farm District Council has been doing a great job bringing new villagers into Luna, so much so that it's actually getting a bit crowded in there, and I think it's about time to, you know, bring some of those guys into the main city. So that is what I'm going to take care of now before we do anything else in this episode. Uh, and is this drown still out here somewhere? He is so, so annoying. Let's go ahead and solve this issue once and for all. Where are you? I, uh, there you are. All right, here's the thing, guy. People are trying to work. I'm gonna need you to shush. Just be quiet if you're gonna stay down here. I don't mind you being down here, but if you are gonna stay down here, you need to be very quiet. Thank you. I am just in awe of this whole boats on lead thing. I can't believe I never knew about this because not only is it faster than actually steering the boat myself, but we can carpool these guys now, which means we can relocate them twice as fast. It is just great. Aside from the, you know, occasional pit stop. We occasionally have to do pit stops, but that's fine. That's fine. All right, we are almost done. I'm going to try to get it down to just our two original council members inside the council office, uh, but they are, you know, bringing more villagers into the city all the time. So I don't know. We might have to give up here pretty soon, I think. Now, we do have a few new librarians, and these guys are all librarians, not cartographers. I have checked. Excuse me, children. Uh, I want to see what kind of trades they have, because if they do have some pretty good trades, then what we can do is we can go ahead and bring them over to Dunder Minecraft, and they might have a new job on their hands. Uh, so, yeah, I'm gonna. I, that's actually right around the corner. I'm going to go grab some paper, and we'll see what these guys are offering. All right, so I should have enough paper to open up all the trades for at least one of these guys over here. Uh, these guys over here, we've talked to them previously. They don't have anything we want. Hopefully, one of these guys will, though. Uh, so let's go ahead and start this. Uh, and I should probably see what kind of... Okay, this is Fortune 1. His first trade is Fortune 1. His first book, not something that we need. Uh, so we, of course, don't have his other trades opened up yet, but we'll keep going until we do, because, you know, it's a pretty quick process getting all the trades opened up. Uh, so, we'll just wait for him to grow some new trades. There we go. We got the green sparklies, and we don't have them open yet, but five glass for an emerald. That's not, that's not terrible. That's not terrible. Alright, let's see what we got now. Now we should be opening up something, and it is Curse of Binding. Why are you doing this to me? Do, do you not want to work? <laughs> I mean, come on now. All right, let's see what his last book is. Come on, be something good. Aww. Respiration 3, okay. Uh, what I'm really looking for here is mending. What I would really like to see is mending. I'm gonna go grab some more paper for the next guy. Come on, give me something good. Give me something good. Where are my sparkles? Where are my green sparkles? There they are. All right, so this guy has silk touch, efficiency, and thorns. The silk touch is something, at least, I guess. All right, so how about you, guy? What do you have for us? You have projectile protection. You also have respiration. What I'm really going to need for you here on this last trade is something awesome. Come on, give me something good. You need you need more. Okay, I, I got more for you. I got more for you. How about that? All right, let's see what he is offering us. Fortune. Fortune one. All right. Well, that's a little disappointing. We did get almost a stack of emeralds out of that, though. Hey, guy. Uh... There we go. All right, so we did get a full stack of emeralds out of that. Pretty easy, so you know what? You can't be too mad about it. Go, be free, do villager things. I think you guys are gonna love this place. There's so much to do, so much to see. It's much different from the farm, though. It's much different from the farm where you grew up, but I think you're going to enjoy it. 
All right, so one more thing before we get back to work. I came over here to drop my emeralds off at Dunder Minecraft, and I saw this guy, and this guy is actually a farmer. Look at that. That's awesome. We have our farmer. We have one of our farmers, which is cool. We need one more farmer, though, for our trading stall, and we also need one more brown coat villager without anything in his inventory to actually work our farm. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of these brown coats around here and see if we have any other farmers, because if we do, that's going to save us a lot of trouble. So out of the entire business district right here, unfortunately, it seems like this guy is the only farmer. I think I checked everybody. I hope I did at least. Uh, if I missed any, that, that's definitely possible because these guys get everywhere. But we're definitely going to need this guy over at the farmer's market. So let me go ahead and get him out of here. Yeah, that's right. He, he's got to go. He's got to go. He obviously doesn't work here. He's a visitor. And you know what? No visitors back in this area. This is employees only. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this guy in a boat. I don't know if you can put boats down on carpet. We're going to try to right here. No, it doesn't appear you can. We got the little boat glitchy thing. All right, so let's go ahead and take this guy on outside. So with this guy over here at our farmer's market, that means our farmer's market is now half staff, which is awesome considering we were 0% staff before. Uh, so we'll get this guy situated in his trading stall. We'll get him some furniture over here and, you know, make this place a little more homey. But I think we're going to go ahead and let him out for now. We'll just make sure that we've got him in here. Uh, and then we're off to a pretty good start, I think. So let's go ahead and close this up. And yeah, like I said, uh, we're going to get you some furniture and your job is fairly simple. Uh, people are going to be bringing you all kinds of food and all you got to do for their troubles is throw them one of those emeralds every now and then. So, you know, I think that's going to be great. I, you might want to get out of the corner. That's that's a little dangerous. We don't want him glitching through the corner there. All right, so we'll just get a little shelf for their knickknacks up here, and I think that's going to be it. So we got these places decorated. This guy, uh, he's got a mug for his hot apple cider. He's got this little painting up there. He's he's put some personal touches in here, which is awesome. Feel free to do what you want in here. But now it is time for us to get back to work. I'm just going to go ahead and clean up real quick, and then we can get to it. I've got our brown coats relocated out here in the field just to clear up a little bit of floor space in here because we want to get an interior done today. These guys should be continuing their meeting. Yep, they're going to think about ways to bring new farmers into Luna. Uh, so what I want to do here, I want to get some floors in. I want to figure out like how everything is going to be laid out in here and just get some preliminary decorating done, the walls, the floors, stuff like that. Um, so I think what we're going to do is go ahead and call Watchdog out here, put on a little bit of music, and get started. Welcome back everybody and of course it is getting dark out so we're going to hurry up and do a quick tour of this place just to show you guys what we accomplished during the time lapse so you can see where exactly we stand as of right now. Uh, so what we accomplished during that we got the ceiling in we got some walls in uh, but everything is looking a bit bare as of right now we'll need to do some decorating in here and of course get some lighting in uh, on the floor level right here some hidden lighting. Uh, let's go back here this is our council chambers you can see we got some accent walls in place uh, just to brighten it up a little bit. 
I think I might want to do the same thing in my office here. My office is looking pretty bare. Uh, so, yeah, we'll do something here. Um, our district councilmen, they are still hard at work deliberating on how to get more villagers into our city. Uh, unfortunately, no brown coats yet, but they are still working on it. They're still working on it. They're coming up with a solution. Those guys are problem solvers. Uh, we can go over here. You can see we have some smaller offices in place. I don't know exactly what these offices are going to be yet, uh, but we'll figure out something for them, you know? Uh, if we go upstairs, you can see we got the same thing. This office over here on this side is actually the bigger office in this building. Uh, and this will probably belong to my assistant district manager, whoever that ends up being. We can't actually get out yet. <laughs> this will eventually be a door that we can actually come out here and see everything once we get like the the... Once we adjourn the district council and get all our villagers in here where we need them to be, like we'll actually put doors in here and make this place a little more easy to navigate. That's not going to work, is it? Uh, let's go ahead and get this back in place. Oh, I should have thought of this before I broke everything. You know, we'll leave it for now. We'll leave it for now. We'll wait till we actually can afford to get a door in here. Uh, you know, the budget's tight. The budget's tight for Luna at this moment, but this is our last office right here. I mean, not too much to look at as of right now, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do a bit of decorating. Uh, definitely get some lighting in and I'll be back in a minute. Now, as far as brightening this place up, what I want to try is putting glowstone underneath the floor right here and then putting spruce trap doors over that to cover it up. And we'll get rid of the spruce trap doors that are currently doubling as our actual doors at the moment. Uh, and we'll probably end up replacing those with either regular oak doors or birch doors, uh, but they're going to be actual doors in here. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to take care of the lighting, try to take care of some of the decorating, and I'll be back in just a minute to show you what I've got. Well, I did a little bit more than I intended to do in your absence, but we got some stuff done here and I'll go ahead and show you. So we got sea lantern light fixtures up high. Those look like they're the official lighting here when really the majority of the light comes from beneath the floor here. Uh, we got a little bit of furniture in here. We got a little bit of decoration going on. Not too much. I didn't want to go too overboard with it uh, because I like how clean this place looks as of right now, to be honest with you. Uh, so this is my office. As you can see, I redid some stuff in here. Uh, these guys are, uh, they, they seem to have stopped. They probably ran out of carrots. So I have to go give them some more carrots. Uh, uh, but the drowned is back. I told him to be quiet. He didn't listen. Uh, but yeah, you can see how everything is kind of laid out in here. We can go into our permit office right here. You see, we just got these like little tiny offices uh, that, you know, we'll get some villagers into and then we'll start decorating them according to the villagers, you know, tastes, right? I mean, I don't want to make any assumptions on what they like, especially my assistant district manager, who is going to be my right hand man here in the farm area. Over here, we got the finance office. Yeah, I just don't want to I don't want to put up paintings of flowers. Well, maybe the villagers like paintings of creepers, you know, but I am pretty happy with the way this thing turned out. And now that our farm district council is done, that means we can actually get to business out here in the farm district. Oh, we got one. We got one. This has been a very villager heavy episode. I'm sorry about that, but it's very important. That's the whole reason why we're doing this build right here is because we need villagers and we got another brown coat, which is awesome. Oh man, you, you are a lifesaver. I hope you like carrots. Do you like carrots? There's going to be a lot of carrots in your future. All right, this little guy is out here ready to move. And uh, yeah, we got not only this guy, but we got another guy as well. He is out here. He actually made a break for it. And he was able to kind of get out here in, uh, in the backyard area. And unfortunately, he started planting some wheat, uh, which means he does have seeds and wheat in his inventory now, which is not great because he's not a farmer farmer. He's just a brown coat that likes to farm. Uh, which means we can't use him now that he has stuff in his inventory, which is disappointing. Uh, but we'll get him transferred over to the Luna Business District along with some of those other non-brown coat villagers that are in there. In the meantime, though, we do have enough uh, brown coat villagers to actually go ahead and start getting some of these guys into our farms and farming. Uh, so that's what I'm going to work on next. I'm going to put up some fences, get these areas dressed up a little bit, and I'll be back with you in just a minute. Hello, Phantom. I see you. Oh, he's coming this way. Is he going to knock me out of bed? Let's see. Nope. Too little, too late. So as of right now, what my plan is, is to just get some simple fencing in here to keep our villagers in their individual farms and keep them out of the collection system, out of the storage systems and all that stuff that's going to be going on down here. Uh, and as of right now, we're doing the beetroot farm. We'll, of course, do the carrots and the potato farms the same way. And... Um, now that I'm thinking about this, I'm wondering why I have these center areas here because uh, this is not where the storage system is going to be. There's actually no system I can think of that goes in the center. Um, so I'm wondering why I actually made this here at this point instead of running the farm throughout this entire area. 
Uh, but I guess we could always build something here, right? We could we could build something here. I don't think that's what I was intending to do, but we could build something here, I guess, because the storage system is over here. Uh, so there, this is this is really bugging me now. Why did I do this? Do you guys, do you guys know why I did this? Anyway, we've got fences in surrounding all of our farms here and this little guy grew up He is going to be our carrot farmer confirmed because uh, he ended up being a fisherman and not a farmer farmer If he was an actual farmer, we would have moved him over to the farmer's market instead uh, Where he could sell stuff, but you know, he ended up being a fisherman So he's gonna be out here working the field We got our beetroot farmer over here And if we go a little bit further along this way, we can see our potato farmer now, what the plan is for these guys is uh, they should all have completely empty inventory. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and throw them is it eight or nine stacks of food. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw them nine. I think it might be eight, though, but we'll go ahead and throw this guy eight stacks of potatoes since he is going to be our potato farmer. And uh, we'll just make sure that he takes all. Don't throw them back to me. That's so rude. Take all nine of these. And uh, there may be one stack left over. Yeah, it looks like there's one stack left over. So I think their inventory is eight. I will double check that between clips. Uh, but yeah, we'll get them all ready to farm and then we'll get them into their farms and hope that they actually farm. Yeah, yeah, it's eight. It's eight. They have eight inventory slots, so no worries. This guy is all good. He is all ready to get into his farm as soon as we break his boat here. So let's go ahead and do this. And the field is yours, my friend. Go farm. Do do farmy. No. OK, and we'll just go ahead and do the same thing for our beetroot farmer over here. We'll throw him eight stacks of beetroot seeds since we have confirmed that it is eight. Uh, now, our potato farmer is not actually farming. Please pick up all these. I see them just hanging. OK, cool. Uh, so our potato farmer is not actually farming. I'm not sure if it's due to his proximity to the village, to, you know, the Luna Business District or what the reason is for that. We're going to have to figure that out. Uh, we'll see if this guy does the same thing once we break his boat. So is he just going to hang out like the other guy does? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Uh, we'll deal with you guys later. Oh, okay. Okay. That's great. I don't, I don't want that, but that's great. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. We, we might be, we might be good here. Now, moving on to our carrot farmer, we'll see which of his brothers he takes after. If he takes after his beetroot farming brother or if he takes after his potato farming brother. Uh, let's go ahead and pick all those up, please. Thank you very much. And we'll go ahead and unleash him onto his farm and we'll see what he ends up doing. Uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> you know what I just thought? He's going, he's going to take after his, uh, his potato farming brother. He is. Uh, watch. He's just going to sit here, right? Just going to stand here and do nothing because, uh, the thing is when, uh, when these guys, okay, well, he's going to go out to the farm. He's going to go out into the farm, but, uh, he's not going to do any actual farming. I think I know why I just need to confirm with my notes real quick. I, <laughs> I have notes. Uh, so yeah, just, uh, just stare up at the sky for a little bit. That's cool. Okay. I remember what these center sections are for now. I remembered. Uh, therefore our carrot and our potato guys. So you'll notice this beetroot farmer. He is, he is just going at it, harvesting crops, right? He is just doing his thing. And this is purely decorational on his farm. It's just to preserve a sense of continuity between his farm and the other farms over here, because we do actually need those on the carrot and potato farmers farms because uh, his inventory is full of seeds. Our beetroot farmer, his inventory is full of seeds. These guys inventories, however, are full of food. So they're like, Oh, we don't need any more food. We don't want it. Uh, so they will not automatically harvest the food but they will replant and that's 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 what uh that's what we intended to do here he's see how he replants instantly he just won't harvest so what these center sections are going to be are automatic harvesting things i don't remember how i intended to actually do them but uh yeah that's what these are for uh, therefore our carrot and our potato farms uh, That's a, kind of the problem when you kind of you know switch back and forth between projects is that when you're working on the intervening project You kind of forget what you're actually doing with you know the first project, but we will figure it out We will make this work uh, as long as this guy doesn't trample all his crops first. It's not good It's not good guy so that's probably going to be what we tackle next episode. The remainder of our food farms. That guy's just over there trampling everything. Uh, these, <laughs> these guys. Uh, anyway, what I want to go ahead and do now and between episodes is get the remainder of these villagers. Well, not all of them, uh, but most of them out of the 
farm council office and back home to Luna so that we can clear out some space to have some more villagers in here uh, because I don't like it to get too crowded in there. You know, it's uncomfortable for them. It's uncomfortable for me. You need to get into a boat guy and all you guys, you need to get into a boat as well. Uh, just okay. <laughs> Trying to make sure you're safe here. Uh, so yeah, everybody in the boats. Carpool time. Let's go home. Come on. All right, well, you know what? They'll pathfind their way out of here. They always do, so I'll give them a few minutes to go ahead and do that. But I think that is going to be it for us today here, guys. So if you have enjoyed this episode, please feel free to hit that little thumbs up button. That would mean a whole lot to me. And if you want to see more, please remember to subscribe. But as always, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, I am Lobo, and I will see you guys later.